welcome back to So What, a conversational sewing show where we talk about everything sewing. And we do it with me, Stuart, from The Woolpatch, and of course, Carol, Master Taylor Couturier. Hey, Carol. Hi, Stuart. Just finished for the day. Yeah, Let's wonderful. Stop, Let's <laughs> stop and have a chat. What were you doing today in the, in, in the studio? So today, um, I'm starting a new range of garments and I'm using uh, Alcantara or Ultra Suede. Ooh. And I used this a long, long time ago. I copied some Halston patterns when I, was a, when I was a young girl just starting to get into sewing. And it was called Ultra Suede. And it's fantastic. It's, um, it mimics suede, but it's machine washable. And wow. it's softer and it, it doesn't have any of the impurities that um, normal suede would have. Um, to maybe, you know, it has a regular face on it. It's none of the personality of suede, um, but it's machine washable. It's, it's easy to handle, doesn't fray, doesn't stretch too much. So and I'm starting a new uh, series of spring, summer uh, lightweight coats. So that's what I was working on today, trying to get the finish right and trying to get the... Yeah. The stitch length right you know when you're top stitching like yeah. trying to get that a, a pleasant you know run of stitches so yeah maybe next week i'll have something to show lovely what was it called again the, the posh name for it is uh alcantara is oh. is how i buy it it comes from italy my supplier yeah. so Al alcantara or ultra suede oh. and we used to use it on um outdoor garments you know, for, for elbow patches and sometimes a, a shooting patch on, on what I, what, whatever side. Um, yeah, but it's a, it's a nice practical oh. alternative to yeah. suede. And you're excited because it's a new project. Exactly, yeah. yeah. Every well, project is a new project, yeah. I, I'm getting on with my new project. <gasps> Look. Look at this. So how far have you got? Let's see. Oh, you're, so, you're top stitching. Yeah, top stitch. Uh, oh, so I pieced it all nice. together. How's that? That is beautiful. Well Consid done. Considering wow. that the Look button at is, that. the button is going to go over the, uh, most of that, isn't it? Lovely matching. But it kind of is really virtually there, isn't it? Yeah. Yes. And really, very good job. Maligning. There you go. So how did you, did you find that, uh, did you do it in two halves and then um, join the two halves together? Yes. Or how did you, how did you build it up? So like your tutorial, I did a stay stitch on each of my eight wedges. Yep. And then it's so two together, two together, two together, two together, and then two to four. So you then have a four yes. and a four, and then the right half and then you've got your full piece um well then and did you find when you put the four to the four did you find that that um that point everything met up there it's it's how it's, did that work did, out yeah it did meet up it, it's hard it's hard going over that because that's a but i had pressed my seams open oh yeah oh yeah um but it went yes. over it, and I and as I say, I think if you were if you were really looking at that, I mean, not that we're going to really analyze that, but it's oh, because oh, but that's that's a thing of beauty. That is but really say, you've got you've got a button over that anyway, haven't you? Um, yeah. But I really really enjoyed it, and that that stay stitch in there not only helped me go up and turn and come back on myself but I realized how important it was to stop the the wool because I'm holding it a lot especially when I was doing my top stitching you kind of pull pull it don't you to it's, try and you know yeah, get yeah. that seam flat and, open. and and you're you're working on the stretchy part of the cloth yes. or the grain the stretchy so the stay stitch keeps it in intact yes. it keeps its length so it? that that preparation that extra work actually save time in the long run so yes so i am i'm uh getting ready to then obviously put that in and then do the the waistband and the hat but it's a wonderful pattern it's by sewing b adam james um, brooks um and uh, i'll put the link in below we've talked about mm -hmm. him on our last one it's his pattern because he made it in the sewing bee it was one of their challenges wasn't it 
yeah, but that's right. You can't find the pattern. There's not, not a real easy to buy pattern out there in the sewing world. Well, now you can. So if you just click on the link below, you can go to his Etsy page and buy the pattern. And what's so good about the pattern is it comes with that plastic peak in the pattern. Mm -hmm. So you don't have to go out and try and work out what fabric, you know, plastic is to, to, to buy and, and end up with like half a meter of it. He's done it for you. So it's, it's a wonderful pattern. So. That is what a good thing to do, and it's perfect timing for the season. Yeah. And uh, as you say, you don't have to go out and find uh, and spend money on in, in yeah. heavyweight interfacing. You've got that. And look and at that what fit. A fit. What a fit. Oh, that's going to be a uh, Bobby Dad. That's going to be good. Yes. By Paul. Oh, how enjoyable is that? Huh? Come and get your apples and pears, <laughs> half price. <laughs> <laughs> Stuart, tell me something. On your lining, did you press your lining through as well, the seams? Absolutely, yeah. Yep, okay. Just wanted, just checking, just yeah. checking. Yeah, I wanted to keep it all, all, all proper, like as good as possible. So hopefully that will be finished by the time we do it next week. Very good, very no. good. Well, it's enjoyable. It's a, it's, a, it's a finicky effort, isn't it? But um, you take it slow, you do your preparatory work, and then it builds up faster than you yeah. think yeah. doesn't it but what what i what i like about it um which i don't often find with dressmaking in in the quilting and patchwork piecing world you do um but i don't find it as much in in dressmaking is the the repetitive nature of it i got to embed that skill over and over again because because you were having to sew two pieces of cheese the triangles together you did it once you then did it another time and then you did it another time you really built up that that skill and and of course if you were a bit worried about doing it on the posh harris tweed you could do it on your your lining first couldn't you you could do that lining is a bit slippery your wool is a lot more forgiving yes that's it a very good takes, point it takes yeah. more mm. ease but I think it's a really good idea if you're trying this for the first time. Yeah, but that you just pick any fabric and have a practice. Right. So I, in theory, I've repeated that same action once, two, three, four, five, eight times. And then obviously the two to two to get a four. So it was just nice doing the same technique and getting better at it. Sure. And because this project involves two different materials, and then a third with the, with the bill piece, mm. that there is this other idea that it, you're, it, it gets embedded in your hands yeah. as well. So you're, you're learning it yeah. in your mind, but also in your hands, you're learning how to handle a lining fabric. Yeah. In your hands, you're learning how to handle a heavier wool. So those fabrics are getting embedded. So your hands are gonna learn Mm. And how to manipulate, how to control different fabrics, aren't they? Absolutely. And I, I found that's the hardest part about dressmaking is there are so many skills, you know, like with making a shirt, you, you're never really getting to do the same thing over and over. So you do your placket, but you've only got them twice to do. And, and then so sometimes those skills to do, how did I do that? How did I do the button band? How did I do the collar? There are so many separate skills. You're not you're not doing them unless you make loads and loads of shirts to embed that technique. You, you might not come back to another shirt for, for weeks, and then you're like, "How did I do the placket?" So it, yes, it, it, it absolutely is. right. And when they automate this, when they manufacture it, you'll have a person that's sitting at a machine, maybe all day long. All they do is prepare a placket, and then oh, the really? pile of plackets get handed on to the ah. person who's doing the sleeve. Yeah. And then that gets handed on and handed on. So the only way to speed this process up, because it it, it elongates the project if yeah. you have to do everything yourself. Yeah. Because as you say, you say, oh, now we've got to the collar. Now, how do we do the collar? How Absolutely. does that go into the same? Yeah. So they they segment the jobs. And right. uh, in tailoring, you'd have a machinist. And a machinist would come and they'd, they'd unroll the, the bundle. They deal with the four parts the side body they put the pocket in sew up the darts and that's it I they would machine that. machine that bit because
putting a pocket in is is really intricate job but think about it if you have a stripe or a check fabric mm. you know and it's got all that preparation that lining up so you specialize in machining or you specialize in basting yeah. or you specialize in, and that way you can automate the whole thing and then you can make uh. hundreds and hundreds can go out in the factory in a day you see yeah i get you I, I think that's why I, I'm going to make another shirt because I still want to embed that because I, I I made several mistakes. So I, I actually ended up making four plackets, didn't I? <laughs> <laughs> so I feel quite skilled at plackets, but I want to make another shirt again to embed those techniques to to because you do need to do them over and over again. And and I think that's where we're actually going to go on to, isn't it? Is is that um, some of those techniques are fundamentals. Absolutely. And I think it's it's reducing what could be a really complex set of tasks with with your sewing, just reduce them, just break them down. Yeah. You know, you think about what what it is you're actually doing. You're sewing one stitch at a time, aren't you? That's what yeah. your machine does. It has an upper thread. It has a, a, a bobbin thread, a lower thread. It has a tension setting. It has a stitch length. And that's what you're doing. You're making those choices and then you're sewing one stitch at a time you know and so you think about it i've, I've prepared a little sample here because i thought we could talk about stitch length oh you know, brilliant you to, would you Absolutely. like to do that I'd, yeah. I'd love to do that because when i was doing my the hat i i actually the stitch when I was sewing the two together I actually didn't know whether I was supposed to change my stitch length because I was using wool and whether that stitch length for for sewing the two pieces together before I um ironed open my seam should that technically have been a different stitch length to my cotton and then mm -hmm. I was then having to top uh, stitch then I was thinking oh I thought top stitching is technically longer so should I start doing them longer and of course when I started sewing I forgot so I started lengthening it halfway through <laughs> so all those questions made me think do you know what this is a basic fundamental it would be great to talk about that with Carol yeah. so yeah. great you're right go for it you know, and always the other thing you can do is always make samples now, if you're working with a, a stretchy fabric or a springier fabric or a fabric that has a looser weave, like your wool, right? You can sew, uh, just sew a sample seam and then tug at it, tug at it. Sew something on the bias, try to pull it apart. If your thread breaks, you need something else, you know, uh -huh. you, need, you need to improve on that. So you might choose a shorter stitch length a heavier thread, you know, so samples are really important. And um, with, with my industrial machine, I like to use about 12 stitches per inch. So that the range for sewing just a normal seam, normal yeah. sewing, is about 10 to 15 stitches per inch. Right, I'm gonna just so stop you there because yeah. I'm thinking of my machine mm -hmm. and I don't think it will say that my my machine it says 1.8 to 2.0 what, what does that what actually is that saying then yes so the smaller the number on your stitch dial the smaller the stitch okay the higher the number mine goes up to four yeah the longer the stitch so and what is that is that number actually something is it refer, referring to a centimeter a millimeter number, number of stitches per inch oh i didn't know that okay so if you if you go to the longest setting yeah. which is a basting stitch that's going to be between six and nine stitches per inch depending on your machine yeah so i'm using an industrial i okay. think my domestic machines the stitches are a bit longer yeah just a bit longer oh i see but my gathering stitch is about eight stitches per inch and that is equal to number four on the dial of my stitch length oh i see right. got it yeah, okay. yeah yeah so and once again a, a regular stitch a regular mm -hmm. stitch which you would hem with or sew your seams with uh or not top stitching like as as you rightly pointed out top stitching is a bit longer 10 to 15 stitches per inch 
is a regular stitch length. Oh. Now, what do you do? You sew in a contrasting thread. Yeah. You know, take a piece of calico like I've got here, take a contrasting thread, just sew, and then take your measuring tape and then line it up with your stitches. Can you see that? Here's a, you know, line it up with your stitches and then just count them. Hold just it right closer. Them. Go closer Within to the screen. Inch. Oh, yes, I see. Yeah. yeah. See that? Just yeah. line up your your measuring yeah. tape and then just physically count the stitches. Okay. Sometimes yeah. you'll get a project and they'll say, so X amount of stitches per inch on this particular task. I've, I've seen that. Oh, really? Right. Okay. Yeah. So then, but it, you know, it's, it's more important to know what, how strong the stitch is going to be on the fabric. And um, in this case here, can you see that? I've actually got a double line of gathering stitches. Yeah. Is that clear? That is. So is this, is this, is, you're going to pull, are you, on this? Yes. So I'm going to take two of these threads because you've got, you've got two of them here and yeah. you've got two of them here. Right? Oh, yes, because you've got your upper thread and your lower thread. And your lower thread. Yeah. So I'm just going to twist these two together. Yeah. And I'm going to start to pull them. And you've got to be very careful. And when you pull them, keep this hand, just, just keep it stationary, this yeah. hand. And then with this hand, pull against it. Oh, I see. And, so you're kind of moving yeah. the fabric as well. You're moving that you're drawing the fabric away. See, away this from... thread is getting longer now. Right. You see? Yes, yeah, yeah. Okay. And it's you see how easy it is and how even this this. Yeah. The gathering line happens quite evenly because you've got the two. Okay. Now, is that, yeah? is that only working easily because it's a long stitch thread or, or, or not? You've not changed it? It's, it's, a, it's working easily because it is a long stitch. Right. Okay. It's working easily because I've set my machine on a gathering stitch or six to nine stitches per inch ah, okay right. so and when you're manipulating this stitch when you're manipulating this let's say you're gathering a really a, a long piece yeah you know or you've got miles and miles of tool um what you can do is you can take a pin and you can put the pin at the top and the bottom of this, and then you can take your threads. Where are they? Here they are. You can take your threads and you can wrap them around the pin. You see what I'm doing? Oh yeah, up and down around, yes. Yeah. And then that holds it, you see? Oh. That holds it. So your work is, it's stationary there. Yeah. And then you can go and then you can work on this side and then you can gather in that direction. You see? Oh, so, I see, right. Okay. So yeah. that's, that's that long stitch. Now here I have a hem stitch. Ah, now now this we're, hem and we're stitch, always hemming, aren't we? We're always hemming. So yeah. this is a pin hem. This is, I've, I've, I've pressed it up about an eighth of an inch and then I've pressed it up again. So it's a double turned stitched machine hem. Okay. And I've done this one at about 12 stitches per inch. Right. And this is around 2.5, 2.8, just under three on, on the dial on my machine. Ah, oh, yes. So, so now I, that makes me think when I'm piecing, I like a tight stitch because I don't, yeah. I want them to stay together. So I go down to a 1.8. So that's going to be quite a lot of oh, stitches. That's so. there, yes. Yes. Yeah. And that's not going to be, that's going to be strong. That's going to keep. Yeah. And in fact, that's a, that's a tighter weave than, yeah. than probably your, well, no, it wouldn't be tight. It wouldn't be smaller than the weave of your cloth, but in some cases it's that would be. Close, yes. Close. And you don't want to go wrong then because I'm thinking that. <laughs> that's it, that's it. Then that's the thing. The smaller yeah. the stitches, the harder it is going to be to get them out. <laughs> yeah. But you can see how this is sturdy. That's yeah. not working at this. It's broke, you see? Right. Yeah. It's not strong. Yeah. Against this calico, it's not strong. You just tug at it and it breaks. Yeah. So, and you might try that with your 
with your wool. Yeah. Your hat on the bias. Just um, uh, do some test stitches yeah. and just see if you can break them. So you know? if I was starting again and there was nothing in my pattern which said about the stitch length, I should just sew two pieces of scrap wool together and then, as you say, open the seam apart and see if I can pull it apart. And if I can see too much, yes. I know to, to try another one with a, a smaller stitch length. That's correct, Stuart. And you can sew your, your you can sew a small little seam and then you can press it open. Yeah. And then you can tug the two pieces of fabric against each other and see if you can see that, that, that little ladder well, I'm, I'm now going to do that with my seam. Um, yes. And let's have a look. Let's have a look. It's probably hard. A no, little, I can see, that. see? Yeah, a little bit. Look. There you go. Yes, you can see between them. Mm -hmm. But I am pulling really hard. Yeah, yeah. But and that's, that's, that's not the kind of wear and tear that hat's going to get. No, you're, you're, no. you're going over, yeah. But technically, I could have probably gone a bit smaller then because I think my machine if I don't touch my stitch length I think it's it's default setting is 2.5 yeah so I could have you probably... know do you know how many stitches per inch that is I don't know and you'd have, to, you'd have to count it okay it, it, it will be interesting to see if uh, if all machines are the same maybe some people out there in, in the in, in viewers youtube viewers who are watching can let us know in the comments because i don't know whether 2.5 on a faf machine is the same as 2.5 on your your um uh home sewing machine um so i don't know but um well i suppose i could measure couldn't i have i got a ruler i could yeah I could, and i'd be while you're doing that i would be interested if um people out there if you wouldn't mind um, just sewing a basting stitch on a piece of cloth and measure it for us and let us know what you've got. If, is it somewhere between that six and that nine stitches per inch? So, and try, anyone out there have an industrial or different domestic machines? I'd be very interested in that. Let us know, would you? And Stuart is now counting how counting. many stitches per inch he's got. <laughs> We're and again, it, it, this all adds, it all adds strength to the garment and then, you know, then you've got your thread type. Are you using a cotton thread, a silk thread or a polyester thread? You know, polyester Ooh. thread is, That's if what... you use a long, yeah. you use a longer stitch with a polyester thread, it's going to be stronger than if you're using a cotton thread, isn't it, Stuart? You probably use cotton threads with your quilt. I use cotton thread a lot. Right? Um, and and I think, yeah, that's something you've got to be careful at when you go in to buy your thread. I think you do need to be conscious of whether you're buying cotton or polyester. Um, I use cotton because I work with quilting fabric. We're making quilts and it's probably going to have a, a cotton wadding. It's cotton fabric. So it's just probably nicer to use a cotton thread. So it's all kind of natural from that point of view. But also when you wash your quilt after you've quilted it, cotton slightly shrinks um so you then get this lovely you know that old-fashioned the oldie worldy look oh look, yes yes tighter like puckered but it's not if you see what i mean yeah it gives it some um dimension doesn't it Absolute, instead of being a flat a flat yeah, piece that's yeah good word right one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve twelve yeah perfect well, that's yeah. good. That's that's right in the middle of that ten to fifteen stitches per inch range for a regular a regular seam, closer to the smaller side. So that's good. And what kind of thread did you use on on your hat there? So I, I I've just got as I say I've just got cotton in the shop. So I used uh, Gutterman uh, natural natural cotton, uh, okay. and it's on an orange spool. I think. I think all the, the Gutterman natural cotton is 50 weight. I think that's the generic weight to go for with cotton. Um, and, yeah. I, and I think most sewing shops have them all at 50 weights because technically you can buy um, cotton thread 
uh, a 40 weight and at a 28 weight where it gets thicker and thicker and thicker um, according yeah. to your needs. Because if you were machine quilting, it's probably not very good to use 50 weight thread. You can do, so I, it just means the quilting kind of disappears, it blends in more. But if you use the 28 um, uh, weight thread or even a 12, you, you, you'll, your quilting will show because it's a much thicker thread and it pops more. Yes. So, so uh, yes. when you get to that quilting side, you actually might want to think more about not only the colour, but actually the weight. How much do you want your thread to stand out? That's true enough. And if, you, if you're like stitching in the ditch, you yes. want it, you yes. just want that to disappear. Completely and I, thin. with, with hems, I, I, I like the hems to be really flat. And I like, to, I like to do some tests on that to make sure that the thread just sinks in. Yeah. And it looks straight. With a thicker thread, it some kind, sometimes can just jump a little bit. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. So, so you're straight. probably on a 50 weight or yeah. even a, um, yeah, I don't think you, I don't know what the next one up. You might be able to get an even thinner one. So it really does disappear. And sometimes if I really want a clean, tiny, tiny pin hem that you can hardly see, I will use a, a 120, you know, a, a, almost oh. like an overlocking wow. thread. Yes. Perfect. Yeah. Because it just, it just disappears. Yeah. You know, they used to call some, like a bad buttonhole stitch or too heavy of a top stitch. They used to call it a, a crushed beetle, you know, oh. <laughs> in tapering. It's a, that buttonhole looks like a crushed beetle and it's just too, it's clumsy, too yeah. heavy. Yeah. You know? so, but, um, so that goes back to the top stitching. So yeah. technically you, if you're doing top stitching, I mean, we haven't, some of us, many of us, we, have, we, we there's only a, a limited amount of money we have. So I use the same, I use the same thread for top stitching, but I just widen the stitch because it's more decorative. Is that right? That's exactly right. That's what I do. I find top stitching thread too heavy. Oh, so you, do, do you keep the same one? It's the same one, yeah. absolutely. Uh -huh. Or if I'm if I really want to if I'm working on a fine um, chiffon or gauze or organza, yeah. I'll go with the lightest thread I can find. Oh, I see. And in some cases, that's a, an overlocking thread. Ah, uh, but right. you don't see it. It's no. almost invisible. So. so really we don't need to buy a top stitching thread is it kind of a sales gimmick from that point of view you don't need to change it what would you say though if you were doing jeans and you want that yeah. lovely that classic orange thread would you use the top stitching thread for 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 jeans then I, then I would yeah and 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 that's a good point if you're if you're making dungarees or overalls or jeans if you're sewing with um thick whale corduroy if you're sewing with uh, heavier suede, then then a top stitching thread yeah. is, is going to look better. It's yeah. going to sit better on that fabric. But and you again, it, it comes down to money, doesn't it? But if you didn't, if they were just going to be jeans that you wore, you know, once on a Saturday, then a normal cotton thread or your polyester thread will do for top stitching. Do just fine. Yeah. Would do just fine. Yeah. And the other thing you can do, Stuart, is you can sew over it a second time. So you can keep the stitch length the same, line up your needle and oh. put your needle down where the stitch is divided yeah. in that hole and then sew directly over it again. Yeah. So now yeah. you have, you've yeah. got a top stitch. Yeah, clever mm -hmm. idea. Yes. Oh. Tip. You see? Yes. So, you are. So, so there's a lot to talk about with stitch mm. length. And there's a lot, you know, part of the fundamental of learning your equipment, understanding mm. what it can do, how it, you know, how it works best on different fabrics, what you're happy with, what stitch length are you happy with sewing around a curve, for example, mm. you know, because if you're going through uh, around a sharp curve and you've got a very long stitch, well, it's not going to follow the edge of the fabric, the edge mm. of the finish, is it? It's, it's going to break up. Yeah, you know, it's going to just change directions, and it's going to, you know, yeah. not not be a smooth curve. Yes. In that case, the smaller the stitch you choose, the 
the smoother the curve you're going to have. So you're learning about your machine. You're learning about how it maneuvers and mm. how it steers around different fabrics. And so that's, it's a, like you say, this is a basic thing that, that is, it's a root of your oh, sewing. Absolutely. And, and I know when people talk about sewing, they want to make garments, they want to do this, they do this, but actually this, these simple things that we ultimately will end up using, we do end up using a lot, but we actually need to think about them more, I think, don't we? Actually, so not, yeah. To, yeah. not to, to assume or overlook it. It's, it's something that we, should, that we should always be thinking about, those fundamentals, how important they are. Definitely, definitely. I couldn't agree more. It's because it's at the root of what you're doing, you know, one stitch at a time. Mm. And you'll pick up speed, you'll get faster at these things. But when you're learning, I don't think you can go slow enough. Mm. Oh, you know, and just yeah. pay attention because you're taking in all sorts of information. You're learning all sorts of things about how fabrics behave, mm. about how, you know, you're know, getting to know your machine. I, when I have an outworker come in and work with me, they say, I need a minute. I need to get to know how your equipment works. And you can see them, you know, they're, they're testing the press of foot. They're, they're looking at uh, the, the speed control. Mm. You know, they're, they're getting to know it. And once you know your machine, it's like, it's, it's like it takes over from your own hands. It's Absolutely, amazing. Absolutely, yes. It's like a, what do they call it? Symbiosis. Symbiosis, <laughs> that's a good word. That's now, a good word. Coming back to thread, because it just yeah. made me think. Um, so we've talked about stitch length and changing the length. When you're doing your hems um, and you're, you're choosing a, a, a shade of colour for your hem, is there, a, is there a, a rule with trying to find the exact colour? Well, I've learned about the, um, to choose a shade darker. Oh, right. Slightly darker than your because if it's lighter it tends to pop out a little bit more okay it's more noticeable if it's a shade lighter i'm always amazed when i get an exact match you know <laughs> but luckily the color range is, has expanded hasn't it yeah and so you, you know well, yeah, generally you, look... yeah, look there, you see look at that especially look on that. the the smaller size you get more choice as it goes up to the bigger size there's there's less choice but look at all mm. those small ones yeah so in your cotton let's look at your dark navy range how oh, many yeah dark navy blues do you have i was looking for navy today yeah and i did find a gutterman but this i'm using polyester thread okay so i'm using a poly and i think there were Half a dozen. There are half oh, a dozen different navies. Absolutely. I've got yeah. I've got four. Do you now? Okay. Right, here we go. All right. So I, I, and, and I think the, the camera is going to be rubbish here. That's brighter. the lightest. That's the lightest one. Yeah. There you go. Yep. And then so that's got a bit of grey in it. Yes. This, oh, you can see there. That's got a bit more, it, bit more. Um, it looks warmer to me. It looks like yes, it's it maybe yellower blue. And then you've got this one here, which is almost black. Yes. But it's yeah. not. Let's lay them like that. Can you see? There you. Oh yes. Okay. Yes. A slate. Yeah. Slate blue. Mm -hmm. <laughs> there you are. And but, that's. It. And, and that's the lovely thing about it. And um, I have, <laughs> I have in my shop two, one, two, three, four, five. I have six of these combinations. I have six of these. Wow. And I separate them. So on the top, I've got orange. This yeah. happens to be the pink, the pink batch. This is the orange batch. But yeah, I've got a half a dozen of these. And you know, you just keep buying threads. Oh, this one's trying yeah. to escape here. Trying to get away. In the, um, <laughs> oh, I thought there was a different color. I thought there was a red in the pink. <laughs> it knew it was in the wrong box. It's hopping up. <laughs> um, oh, I've well, got that's quite got, got quite a collection now. But still, I'll start a project and I'll find yeah. I, I've got to go go get a right a, a, a better match than what I have. And then yeah. and some of the threads I, I like. Some of the threads I don't know. Um, 
it's like uh, I, I can't gauge if I have enough. So I'll go, I'll go buy some more because yeah. I don't want to be yeah. caught short, you know. And there are lots of brands out there. Uh, uh, I use yeah. just because it's what I'm used to. I know in, yeah. the, in the patchwork world, there's um, uh, what well, you can use Madeira. There is um, the Italians are coming in. We were talking about the Italians earlier. Orophil thread is oh, yeah. is yeah, is that. it's supposed to be the 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 Rolls Royce of of um, of thread in the in the patchwork world uh, because they have the different weights on offer as well and they have like embroidery floss they have wool mm -hmm. floss too um so because they specialize in that um they have a polyester but um uh, but not a, nothing you know with all these different threads like Gutten have got but um mm -hmm. i think it's it's a case of finding what you like and and the price point as well is yeah, because they've, they've all got different price points yeah and I do find that if I go into a supplier, they have that you know they're loyal to one, Indeed. usually one make of thread. Yeah. They don't confuse the issue. But um, have you ever used silk thread? I haven't. No. Now I've top stitched with silk because I've I do a lot of bridal wear and stage garments, and sometimes uh, a client will say, "I'm going to I'm going to wear this, going to wear this once, and then I want to I want I'm going to have it dyed." I'm going to turn it into a cocktail dress. So you have to be careful that you don't use polyester thread, which will not take to a new dye. Oh, of course. So yes, if they're going to chuck it the washing cotton. machine in dylon or something. That's yeah. right. That's right. So you have ah. to use a, a cotton or a silk. And then that way, everything, everything yeah. will die. I made that mistake once. Um, I, I got something and it was white and I thought, no, white's not working for me. I need this to be darker color. And I just dyed it. And it, of course it had all this railroad track everywhere. And, oh. you know, and it was overlocked as well. Oh. <laughs> so on the inside, all the overlocking stayed white. <laughs> well, if you were on the sewing bee, Patrick would have probably had words with you then, wouldn't he? <laughs> yeah, probably. <laughs> oh, speaking of the sewing bee, um, it's back for um, a Christmas uh, festive season. Last year they had a, a Christmas episode and a New Year's episode. It's coming back again, two episodes um, with a brand new presenter because Joe uh, Joe has moved on to do something else um, and okay. they've got Sarah Pascoe, another comedian, in. Um, oh, right. And she was actually in the Christmas episode or the new one of them last year and I really enjoyed watching her she she was she was funny uh, I went every time it cut to her I, I liked liked her bits to camera so um that's something to watch out for in over, over the festive period oh so that so this Christmas this Christmas it, yeah they've obviously, oh, they've, they've obviously filmed it uh, because they they put a post up on Instagram saying that yes that uh, this, over the over the Christmas period there's going to be two episodes so for uh, people in the UK I don't know whether that gets broadcast uh, to uh, America but I know some people have these clever things where they can access it but yes two episodes this Christmas oh fantastic well we're gonna miss Joe because he was, yes. but I like the idea of having a comedian to balance, you know, with, with Esme and Patrick, because it, it, the atmosphere needs to stay light, you know, yes. it, yeah. we have to you know, laugh at our mistakes and have to keep mm. things light. And, and, and I, so I like that influence of having a comedian. Yeah, in especially when it gets tense. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you need those points. Well, that's been a great episode. Stitch length and threads. Mm. What was your go-to length, did you say? Well, 12, 12 stitches per inch yeah. for my regular seams yeah. and my, my, my neat small pin hems. Mm -hmm. and but then as you say, it depends on your fabric though, doesn't it? It does indeed, yes, yeah. yes. Mm -hmm. Maybe Just we'll try. talk about needles as well on another, on another episode. And actually, why don't you, uh, our, our wonderful viewers, as I say, let us know if there are any topics you want us to cover. I know we uh, already have been asked about jersey and knit fabric. We we have got that planned. That's coming up soon. That just takes a lot, a little bit more research, doesn't it, on our behalf, well, on your behalf. <laughs> uh, yes, and I'm going to have a second camera for that because I want to demonstrate yeah. how, to, how to cope with uh, with jersey, different jersey knits and how to sew them you know, evenly so that you don't end up with a stretched, ripply seam. 
Ah, so we've got that coming. That's coming soon. But uh, before then, if there's anything you want us to talk about, you know you can write comments uh, in, the, in the description down below, or you can uh, DM us on Instagram. Uh, and if there are any other fundamentals you want us to, to cover, we can. But as I say, there are many experienced people out there as well. Well, well there's people who watch. We're all at different levels of ability. Uh, you can ask whatever question, and we have the experience here of Carol uh, 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 as a tailor and couturier, and you've got me as a beginner, uh, the inexperienced, that will ask those questions as, as, as well. So we've, we've got both points covered, haven't we? <laughs> we do, and I think the people out there are going to be really excited to see your finished hat you know and uh i'll have some some new projects coming through and and we'll talk about top stitching and suede how about that there you go well been a wonderful episode and uh, it's great seeing you again and i hope you enjoyed it at home as i say let us know in the comments what you think otherwise we will see you next week see you all bye bye checking in everybody see you soon